Right, so in a previous video on the Welcome to the World of TNT channel, we took a mobile air conditioner apart, had a look at what was inside, had it decommissioned and returned, and we got some radiators and this thing, which is the compressor unit. Now, on another video that we did, we took a fridge compressor apart. We did a fridge compressor because they're just so easy to get hold of. Visit your scrapyard, there'll be plenty of decommissioned fridge compressors, probably in a big pile, and because they hit a great big metal shell, the material in there is going to be in beautiful condition. If it burns out, it's going to be the plastic in the motor that's going to be burnt out. Now you have to remember, compressors are just splash oiled. There's no bearings, they're all bushings. But they are a source of marvellously engineered parts that you can use to make motors out of. And I've seen all kinds of motors made out of them. So I've seen a two-stroke, a four-stroke, steam engines, just a load of kind of things. Now what we're going to do in this video, because I've been saving it, is take this one apart. Because, um, I mean, it's beautiful, hey? Fridges are obviously not made to run continuously, whereas air conditioners are meant to run continuously. Fridges tend to have uh, an elongated body, so they're a motor and a piston. Here it's quite tall and thin, so I'm wondering what's in there. But let's get it chopped apart and see. First thing is, this tank here needs to come off, and we'll cut that there. Then you can see a weld line around there, where we're, and there, where we're going to be cutting in order to get the insides out. Now it will be a sturdy bit of steel because it is under pressure. Remember these things are closed systems and there's not supposed to be any leaks at all for the refrigerant gas. So they make them very heavy duty. But enough talking, let's get some sawing done. Oh, one more thing. These are almost invariably splash oiled. So there's a bit of oil sitting at the bottom. The movement just chucks it all around and gets everything oiled, so they are uh, bushings rather than bearings very often, and this will be full of oil. Okay, so that was challenging because it was well made. I had to cut the top and the bottom off and cut into the case and cut the case into two halves to get it off. You had three spot welds on it. But by the time we got it off, that's what we have. Now, that again, there's the motor section and there's the pump section. And it is an induction motor, so we can pull that out and there's our stator. Very nice stator, I can put that to one side, and there's our rotor, our squirrel cage rotor for the induction motor. And this is a rotary pump, and you can see there are four bolts holding it on. It's very curious in there, so let's get that open and have a look inside. So I've disassembled the compressor, there's the cover plate, we get it back off, there we go. That's the cover plate and you can see the valve chamber here, it's just a circle. It's got one outlet there, it's another hole here where there's a spring operating that piece of steel which presses against that. That comes off and we're on a cam and then that obviously goes to the motor. This bit is the inlet valve, so we've got a couple of little cuts in there that allows the gas in and then we've got an entry valve right there so the gas can come in but gets closed when it actually comes around to close it little locating pin to tell you which way around to put it there we go like that So that's forced to rotate against the pressure of this, and as it rotates, it goes round, forcing it out of here. So quite a clever valve arrangement, but sorry, compressor arrangement, but a rotary compressor instead of a linear pump. Okay, as the eccentric shaft rotates, the rolling piston from top dead center past the suction port, the suction port begins to open and the space begins to form between the vein, the rolling piston and the housing. With continued rotation, the volume of this space increases, reducing the pressure below the low side pressure side in the cycle. Vapor is then 
drawn in through the suction port and this continues for a full revolution until the compression volume is filled with the vapour that has been sucked in at low pressure. During the next rotation, the suction port is blocked by the rolling piston. The low pressure vapour is then compressed between the space of the rolling piston housing and vane and discharge valve on the other side of the piston. Initially the discharge valve is closed and that traps the low pressure vapour for compression. Continued rotation of the rolling piston on the inside of the housing reduces the volume of the vapour, compresses it against the vane and raises its pressure. When the vapour pressure exceeds a high side pressure it pushes open the discharge port and discharge continues until the rolling piston can completes a full revolution and expels most of the high pressure vapour. So there we go, a rotary compressor out of an AC unit. Now, it was a pain to get out because it was so firmly fixed in there, but it's a beautiful piece of kit and I am tempted to try and make my own rotary engine out of it. But that's a different kind of compressor and they're used in AC units. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please remember to like and subscribe.